Good morning, everybody. I don't see my best friends among you, Al Schuller and Aliner. They know practically everything about this talk, and this is probably the reason that they did not come. I think he's on the way. Uh -huh. Okay, let me check whether this works. It does. So, what I will do, ah, first of all, I have to say that I'm grateful to the organizers for inviting me to this conference. I have been here at ICTP so many times that I even do not remember how many, practically every year, sometimes even twice or three times. And uh, now I will talk about quantum gases in disorder. This is the outline of my talk, mostly related to many body localization, delocalization, transition in disordered quantum gases, ultra-cold gases, and the work, the original work that I will report on today has been done to, together with Boris Altschuler, Igor Aleiner, and Vincent Michal. I do not even see Vincent Michal here. Yes. Okay. So, um, let me now start the talk. So, as all of you know, most of you much better than me, that if we have a many body system in disorder and particles don't interact with each other, this is the disorder potential, these are my particles, then the transport and localization properties are determined by Anderson localization, uh, which was predicted in 1958 and got the Nobel Prize in 1977, I think, yes that there is a destructive interference in the scattering of a particle from random defects. As a consequence of that, the wave function attenuates mostly exponentially <laughs> at large distances, and the transport properties are just absent. There is an old question, how does the interparticle interaction influence localization? And this is a long-standing problem. It was crucial for charge transport in electronic systems, and now it appears in a new light for disordered ultra-cold bosons, for example, now also fermions. And uh, there are many experiments in Palazzo, in the group of Alain Aspe, in the group of Massimo and Gushu at Lens, then at Rice Urbana in Switzerland, and so, and so on. Yes? So, but you know, before people started experiments on ultra-cold atoms in disorder, so what means ultra-cold? Since many of you don't work in this field, ultra-cold means that the temperature is below one microkelvin, from 1020 to 200 nanokelvin, yes? Um, many things were known. Yes, it was, for example, known or got known almost at the same time that there is Anderson localization of light, microwaves, sound waves, electrons, and solids. And what was expected is Anderson localization of neutral ultra-cold atoms in disorder. The disorder is usually created in these experiments by making optical speckles randomly. Yes, they can do that. And then, uh, Atoms interact with these pieces of light, and this is the interaction of an atom with the disorder potential. Uh, before I start uh, explaining things, I would like to mention why to study ultra-cold atoms in disorder. Because very many interesting things have been done with light, with electrons, and so on. But what happened is that let's say some 10 years ago or even 12 years ago, there was a question of an atom laser. What is atom laser? You have a chip. On chip, you create a one-dimensional waveguide, very narrow magnetic trap, <laughs> yes? Uh, and a correlated atomic beam is propagating in this atom waveguide. It's, it's above the surface, and the beam feels imperfections of the surface, so you get this correlated beam on top of the random defects. And that's how the investigation of ultra-cold atoms in disorder have been started. But very quickly, people realized that there are many more interesting things from fundamental physics, in particular how the interaction between particles influence localization. 
Yes, and so let me now give a very brief overview. I cannot give a complete overview, but just very brief. So within my drawing facilities, that's how people work. This is the harmonic trapping potential in which you get atoms, Bose-Einstein condensate. I may made it one dimensional. Please don't be surprised that I say Bose-Einstein condensate in a one dimensional system. In a 1D system, it's a purely finite size effect. The correlation length is larger than the size of the system. And then you superimpose a disorder potential and you get distortion in the density profile. Then it, it was extremely simple to continue just to repeat the Nobel experiments of 1995 uh, what to do? Imagine you switch off the harmonic confinement. Without a disorder, this was the Nobel experiment of Eric Cornell and Wolfgang Ketterle. The gas expands, and the condensate expands differently compared to a thermal cloud. What happens if the disorder is still present? You switch on this green guy, but the disorder is still present. Then, naively, from what we know from literature, we expect that eventually the expansion should stop. Uh, the particles, when the density becomes small, behave themselves as non-interacting, and non-interacting particles in disorder in one dimension uh, should be localized. And that's what was happening in the first experiment in Orsay, in the group of Alena Spe. Uh, eventually, the tails be become stationary. The expansion stops. That's the density profile. This was the first observation of Anderson localization with ultra-cold atoms. There were more experiments after that, in, in particular the experiment at Lens in the group of Massimo Ingusio, Giovanni Modugno, but I will tell later about that. The end, so what was not immediately expected, let's say some 10, 12 years ago, as we all know that in one dimension, if we have one-dimensional bosons, uh, non-interacting, in a random potential, all single particle states are localized in 1D. That's what everybody knows. And there is also a dogma, even if they interact, no finite temperature phase transitions in one dimension, since all special correlations decay exponentially, yes? But these guys, following a general theory of many-body localization, said that there is a non-conventional phase transition between two distinct states, fluid and insulator, and this transition is induced by the interaction, and it's non-conventional because the behavior of thermodynamic functions is so far not exactly known, but what is known is that at the transition point, the transport properties are singular. In the fluid phase, the mass transport is possible. In the insulator phase, it is completely blocked, even at a finite temperature. Now I continue. So this all comes from the theory, a general theory of many body localization, delocalization transition, the paper which shows this is this paper from these years. Imagine you are in the localized state, yes? Then one should learn how different states of two particles, alpha, beta, hybridize with each other due to the interaction and find the probability P over epsilon alpha, epsilon is the energy, that for a given state alpha there exist states beta, alpha prime, beta prime such that uh, these two particle states, alpha beta and alpha prime beta prime, are almost at resonance, which means that the interaction-induced matrix element of the transition exceeds the energy mismatch. The energy mismatch exists because, because I'm in the localized state, and in the localized state, the size is finite in the sense that it's the localization length. And many body localization, delocalization transition criterion is that this guy P is of order one. Okay, here is the picture. Then, the matrix element is the largest when the, these energies are almost equal to each other pairwise. For example, alpha to alpha prime, beta to beta prime. 
then the matrix element of the transition induced by the interaction is the Hubbard constant U multiplied occupation number of the state beta lattice constant divided by the maximum value of the localization length. If I am in the continuum, in the continuous phase, this U multiplied A is just the coupling constant G. I consider short range interacting particles, yes? The mismatch it's this formula, and it's eventually equals to the minimum value of a product. Localization length multiplied the density of states. Minimum means that for all these states, alpha, beta, alpha, prime, beta, prime. Then, what you should do, you should calculate the probability that this matrix element exceeds the energy mismatch. Two states, if the matrix element exceeds the energy mismatch, the state becomes strongly hybridized, yes? And this is this guy, yes, right? And then you have to make a summation over the states beta, alpha prime, beta prime, and you get this integral, yes? So, then the critical coupling strength at which the localization, delocalization transition occurs is given by this formula, where this is the density of states, localization length, uh, occupation number, and then this quantity, yes? So that's what it is. I will not explain details of this general theory, which is given in the work of Aleiner, Altschuler, Basco, but just keep the criterion. Then, if I consider a one-dimensional Bose gas, in the absence of disorder, we know what happens. We have a classical gas at temperatures larger than the temperature of quantum degeneracy, which is density squared divided by the mass. Then, in the weakly interacting regime that I will consider so far, yes, we have parameter gamma, which is actually the ratio of the uh, short range interaction to the temperature of quantum degeneracy, Fermi energy for fermions. It's much smaller than one, and then, uh, in here, there is a degenerate thermal gas. No correlations, but the gas is degenerate. And here, you have the, uh, what people sometimes call quasi-Bose-Einstein condensate. You have long-range correlations at zero temperature. They're algebraic, yes? And there is a Bose-Einstein condensation on a finite size. Then, what happens if there is no interaction but there is disorder. As I already told you, all single particles are localized at any energy, Anderson insulator. Whatever energy is, the state is localized. It's only a matter of the value of the localization length. So what is more or less one can guess is that Bose gas in disorder, when particles interact with each other, shows both behaviors. And this is actually true. And here, I just say the density of states is unit divided by square root of epsilon. The localization length in 1D is proportional to epsilon. They are cut at a characteristic energy, epsilon star, which is related to the amplitude and correlation length of the disorder. That's their behavior. In the classical gas, when temperature is larger than the temperature of quantum degeneracy, there is an ordinary expression for the chemical potential density thermal de Broglie wavelength, and using the criterion of many body localization, delocalization transition, which was, I think it's outlined here, yes? I easily get the result that the critical coupling strength, coupling constant G, because I, I'm in the continuum phase, is inversely proportional to temperature. In the quantum decoherent regime, where the chemical potential is temperature squared divided by the degeneracy temperature, yes, I apply the same criterion and get that it's inversely proportional to unit divided by temperature, yes. I can also consider the quasi BEC regime down to zero temperature and find out that the critical coupling strength is just the characteristic disorder energy. I have no time to talk about that. Then, what we can do, we can make a phase diagram. This is the phase diagram in terms of temperature and the amplitude of the disorder. Here you have insulator. The larger is the disorder strength, the more possibility to get to the insulator phase. Don't pay attention that this is blue and this is red. 
is just to separate the degenerate, the uh, quasi BC regime from the regime of thermal gas. Yes? And then, what we can also do, we can plot critical coupling strength as a function of temperature. And then what we see that it's something, and then it goes down with increasing temperature, which we expect, naively we think, that if we increase temperature, then there are more possibilities to delocalize. And that's what one naively thinks. Let us now uh, say that this was the issue which has been expounded about five years ago, yes? And uh, there are many more interesting things which I will say about now. I, ho I hope I will have time. Yes, and then this is the picture for one-dimensional bosons in disorder, and uh, that's what we should bear in mind. There are other things here. For example, the second experiment on localization of ultra-cold atoms has been done at length in the group of Massimo Ingusio, Giovanni Modugno. What they have done they have used the so-called uh, Aubry-Asbel-Harper model. This is the following. The, you have a lattice, yes, tight binding model. Yes, you have particles in this lattice. J is the hopping amplitude. And then you superimpose a shallow incommensurate lattice, this blue curve, yes. Then if the amplitude of the shallow lattice is larger than twice the hopping amplitude in the initial lattice. Then all single particles are localized. And this statement belongs to uh, Aubry and André in 1980. It's a remarkable work in mathematical physics, which has been published in the Journal of the Israeli Physical Society. You know, it sometimes happens that remarkable works are published in some remote places, like the work of Tony Leggett on this BCS-BC crossover, also from 1980-81, has been published in a very strange Polish journal. I got extreme difficulties to get this paper, but a good friend from Israel was visiting Paris, Agamo Dead, and then he told me, Jora, when I go back to Israel, I can find this paper. I will email it to you. That's what he did, and thanks to him. At the same time, uh, Serge Aubry returned to France from vacation and also emailed me his, his paper. The two versions were the same, yes? So, a remarkable work. And then, and what they have done, they have done several experiments. The first experiment was just the expansion to test the localization. In the second experiment, they did it with potassium-39. What you can do, you can modify the interaction between the atoms using the so-called Feshbach resonances. I will not tell you what this is, but that's what they did. And when they change interaction, they detect the insulator and fluid phase and the uh, these are experimental points, the transition between them, yes? So, the end, let me continue. So, let us now try to think what happens in this system at a finite temperature. The thing is that in these lens experiments, the temperature was not very well controlled. It, it was something, and uh, they had difficulties to control it, yes? The end, the localization length for all eigenstates, non-interacting, is given by this formula where Z is the amplitude of the shallow lattice, J the hopping amplitude of the initial lattice, and if V is close to 2J, then this is this formula, A is the lattice constant, and it's much larger than the lattice constant. Then, uh, if kappa, kappa is the ratio of the periods, um, if the period of the, this blue lattice is much larger than the period of the red one, then this, uh, the spectrum for non-interacting particles, it consists of narrow bands, yes, 
And the width of a band increases, by the way, exponentially. When I go from the lowest energy up, up, and up, up to here, then it decreases exponentially again. Now, what we do is very simple. We include the interaction between the particles. Yes, when they're sitting in the same lattice side, just Hubbard constant U, yes, not more than that, and see what happens. Um, let me say that uh, as I told you about these clusters, if the number of clusters, which is unit divided by the ratio of the periods, is n1, the width of the cluster grows exponentially with energy. And then if this n1 is smaller than the localization length, then the number of states of a given cluster participating in the many body localization. The localization transition is simply, simply localization length in units of the lattice constant divided by this n1, or xi multiplied gamma. Yes? If my temperature is much lower than the width of the energy spectrum, the width of the energy spectrum is 8J, yes? Then <coughs> these states are not relevant. They are far away. And only the lowest energy cluster, the lowest energy cluster is this guy. It is the narrowest, yes? participates in the many body localization, delocalization transition, because in the criterion of this transition, I have density of states in the square. This is my criterion of the transition. Occupation number of particle states, let's say this relation where u is the Hubbard constant and epsilon is again the occupation number. And this is the normalization condition for the uh, feeling factor, yes? So, then what I will do, consider zero temperature. Then at zero temperature, there is a very simple relation between the occupation numbers, energy and chemical potential. Yes, mu zero is the chemical potential at zero. And then I get a very simple expression for the critical coupling strength. So nu is the feeling factor. Gamma zero is the width of the lowest energy cluster. The ratio of the periods localization length. And one can easily understand that this formula remains valid if temperature is much smaller than the spacing between the clusters, yes? So far, so good, but let me continue and consider temperatures which are still larger than this spacing, yes? Right? Then, for large occupation numbers, my exponential formula becomes algebraic. This is the formula for the occupation numbers. Yes, and this formula remains like that if the occupation numbers are smaller than one. Then what I do is very simple. It's arithmetics. I substitute this formula to the criterion of the localization transition and get a critical coupling strength as a function of temperature when temperature is much larger than the spacing between the clusters and much smaller than the width of the energy spectrum. Nothing surprising except for the fact that if I look at the temperature dependence, I see that the critical coupling strength increases with temperature. So what we see is that the higher is the temperature, the more difficult it is to delocalize particles. I need a higher coupling strength. This is the anomalous temperature dependence, which was not initially expected. So why this is the case? It's very simple to, to get a physical understanding. You know, the transition is still related to particles sitting in this lowest energy cluster. When the temperature is very low, then the number of particles is something. When I increase temperature and it becomes larger than the spacing between clusters, particles from here come here, 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 yes? And the number of particles here, which participate in the localization, delocalization transition, becomes smaller. Smaller number of particles, larger required coupling strength for delocalization. Yes, and that's what it is. And that's how the picture looks. This is 
the critical coupling strength in units of the hopping amplitude multiply the filling factor. Three curves are for three different filling factors. This is temperature. So what we call this is freezing with heating phenomenon, yes? Uh, increase in temperature favors the insulator state. I am here in the fluid. I increase temperature. Then, in contrast to the expectations, I become an insulator. Yes, that's what it is. Now, one can ask whether this is an artifact that I selected the period of the shallow incommensurate lattice much larger than the period of my initial lattice. The answer is no. For example, if I take the so-called golden ratio, according to people doing mathematical physics, for this golden ratio, this Andre Aubry asbel model, uh, models best of all the disorder system, Yes, then, for example, for this V, I also get the same. Yes, the same type of curves. Yes. And this has been done by uh, doing exact diagonalization. Vincent Michel spent uh, plenty of time on doing that, as well as for previous examples that I have shown. Please do not think that the very respected guys like Al Schuller and the guy like Schlapnikov did exact diagonalization. This is not true. This is Vincent who did that. Yes, so uh, therefore, we have an anomalous temperature dependence of the critical coupling strength. When I am giving public lectures, what I usually do, I again pronounce the words um, freezing with heating. And that is a very good example for general public. You know, if I take a glass of water and start to heat it, yes, then I get hot water or water vapor. In this example, I take a glass of water, start to heat it, and get a piece of ice. Yes. So that's what is happening. Quite funny. So aside from interesting things like many body localization, delocalization, transition at finite temperatures in 1D, one may get this phenomenon. And the experiment is now underway. So let me. Uh, I think I can even save five minutes for other speakers of today. Should I do that, Emil? Ten minutes. Well, including questions. Okay, so let me then say that according to what I showed you, one dimensional bosons is a promising system to study the many body localization, delocalization transitions and atoms in quasi-periodic potentials uh, is an interesting system where increasing temperature may favor localization. At this point, I have to say thank you for attention, but I'm not yet finished, yes, since I have five minutes, yes. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Emil. Yes, but you know, I did not sleep very well, yes, I slept very little, therefore, I just decided, in order not to say something stupid, my talk should be shorter, yes? Now, what I would like to show, I would like to show this, yes? I am very happy that Boris Altshuler eventually came to listen to me. He knows everything about what I said, even more, yes? So this is him. Do you recognize Boris? <laughs> then, uh, so what is written here, Boris, welcome to the club over 60. If I look in his passport, it turns out that he got 60 years old a little bit earlier than today, but this does not matter, you know, uh, because, you know, in the club over 60, Boris, it is quite nice still, yes, it's okay. I am already in this club for a long time, yes, those who think that I am young, are not right. But you know, after I got 60, the life did not change. You only feel yourself a little bit more comfortable. People start saying, okay. Yes, and that's what it is. And what I hope is that um, in some time, we will celebrate your 70th, 80th, 90th, 100th birthday, and so on. Yes, do not know and not, not sure that this will be here at ICTP, but at least somewhere. 
yes? And uh, you know, I can tell you an interesting story here. Some years ago, when my good friend and teacher Yuri Kagan was 83 years old, he was forcing his son Maxim and Maxim's wife to, to do the work in his house, in his country house, which, which is a huge house. And they were not happy. Then Yuri started to talk to them and said, he was 83, you know, guys, you should work hard here because in 17 years, this all will be yours. Yes? So, Boris, in 60 years, this all will be yours. Thank you for attention.